Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are going to be working on something other than the Dodge Charger. Uh, by the time this video comes out, it's probably going to be late December, maybe mid-December. Hopefully I get it done quickly. Uh, but winter's coming, even though I'm out here in a t-shirt and as you can see I'm sweating. But snow is coming. Uh, we usually get pretty bad winters, so... My parents just sold their uh, sh uh, Chevy pickup, so they don't have anything for winter. So I decided I was going to let them use one of my trucks, and what I'm going to let them use is this. It is a 2003 Ram 2500, and the best thing about it is it's a diesel, as you can see. Now. This truck I got extremely cheap for what it is. Let me show you the rest of the goodies on it before I even tell you what I paid for it because it's going to probably piss some of you off. Anybody, anyone who likes diesels and knows what these trucks are worth is probably going to be like, how the hell did you do that? But let me show you around the truck a little bit, show you what I have to fix on it to kind of indicate a little bit of why I got it so cheap. But it's really not bad, so... Here we go. All right, so as you saw, it is a Cummins 24 valve, 03, obviously. Um, from what I've been told and what I've actually seen paperwork for is it has brand new injectors in it already, has a new injection pump, has um, a South Bend clutch, has, oh, Crap. I can't remember exactly what else he said. Um, then it's got the k and n intake for it, for the turbo. Uh, saw a little bit of the damage there. But let's uh, step inside and show you the real jewel of this truck. Besides being four-wheel drive, that's right. That's three pedals and the stick. But yeah, it is a six-speed. So, but normal farm truck, I don't know what the hell they did up there, but the dash is disintegrated. But not much to really see on here. It is the bottom of the bottom as you can get. Besides, obviously, three pedals, six speed, a little four wheel drive shifter. Not much else in here, but. Missing door panel over there. Um, got a safe back here. And yes, I do actually mean it is a safe. So, I'm assuming since he was a farmer, probably had a handgun or something like that in there. Maybe some important documents. Uh, got your normal cradle there. Back here. Uh, bed has no rust at all. So I'm assuming they got this off of another truck because as you can see, it's two different colors. I don't know if it'll show up in the camera. Um, rust on this side, not horrible. Um, easily fixed. Bottom of the door. You got to remember we are in... So uh, I'd say we're more Midwestern Iowa. So they use salt on the roads during the winter. So finding a bed for one of these that's rust-free is pretty nice. Um, got some wheels. I got these from a buddy of mine. I got to clean them up, repaint them, powder coat them. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I got some cheap tires that I'm going to throw on here. Just something to get it along the way because as you saw... Well, I don't know if you can see that front tire... It's got mismatched wheels. There we go. It's got this wheel and then it's got a steel wheel over there. More of a no rust. Here is the worst rust spot on the whole truck. Right there. Still not bad. I would be able to fix that cab corner if I was keeping this truck in the long run. Um, this wheel, can't really see it. But this tire has surprised me. The sidewall actually has a hole in it. 
and the back of the wheel I had to beat out with a sledgehammer and I've had this truck almost a year now haven't done anything with it and it's still holding air I have not put any air in this tire since I've gotten it here but as for the rest of this this is what happened so guy completely redid all this put the injectors in put the injection pump in completely redid the whole front end did the south bend clutch did all of that and he decided to see how strong a telephone pole is last winter and what happened uh what i've had to replace so far just to get it off these control arms that are here and here had to replace those i have a come along there because it actually twisted this axle right it uh the other side is fine it's just this side they have little plug welds that hold the axle tube to the differential housing and it actually snapped all those off and twisted the axle up so i've got one right there that is out of a 2005 but it has the same gear ratio as this axle so i'm going to throw this in here to drive around until I get my other truck fixed and then I am actually going to tear the whole drivetrain out of this truck to put into another project truck I have that will be coming on the channel. Um, but as for all of this, I need to get this bumper off, this fender off, and as you've probably seen in some of these videos, I do have this parts truck here. I got this for $600.00. It does have a good running Hemi in it, has almost the exact same accident as this one, just not as bad, but it is a gas truck, so you do have upper and lower control arms, and as you can see, the uh, steering knuckle here is disintegrated, and it actually broke the bottom control arm, so this is going to be a parts truck, the drivetrain out of this my dad and i have been talking and we think that we are going to try come on camera focus and put it into that that is a 89 dodge ram charger it currently is a 360 four-wheel drive 727 trans got it from california so there's no rust on that either just a very shitty paint job and we think it would be badass with a hemi and i do have a five speed that i could possibly throw behind this hemi I just got to figure out how to work the computers and everything. But I think this is old enough that I can just leave all the transmission stuff that actually is supposed to bolt into the transmission on this unplugged. I've read on a couple of forums that it will still work. But that is for another video. This is for this. So I've given you a little walk around on the truck. I am going to go ahead and start trying to get this all unbuttoned and everything. Get this fender off, get this bumper off. Um, I honestly think I'm going to have to... Probably going to have to take the bumper off first on this. And, uh, yeah, we will see where we go from there. Alrighty, got the bumper off so far. And uh, if anybody needs to know how to do that... You literally just have four bolts, two on each side, to go through the bumper bracket, through the frame. Mine were three quarters, and they actually came out relatively easy. So, bumper's off. Now it's time to uh, take this fender off, which it looks like it's going to be 10 mils. Yay. And then I will get her jacked up and start undoing all the linkages. And we'll go from there. Alrighty. So, as you can see, no more fender. It is right there. And uh, I am relatively surprised that for as much damage as this was before I semi fixed it this frame is not bent at all which is 
very surprising for me. Um, a little scuffed up here and there, but from what I am seeing, it is not bent at all. Okay? Which I am very, very surprised at. And uh, once again, got to show you how to do it. Uh, to remove the fender on one of these trucks, you got 10 mil, 13. If it's a Cummins and it has the extra battery box or if somebody's added that, 10, 13, 10. And then there is actually a hidden one up under here. This was a Phillips for me. And then you have a 10 mil sitting in right there. And then you also have a 10 mil that bolts in down here. Now this goes to the antenna. And if you don't know how to remove an antenna from a fender, you unscrew the metal piece and then you'll be left with this. This collar actually unscrews. And then this black part that you normally see on the outside of the fender will come off and this will just drop out the bottom of the fender, okay? Other than that, um, you have to remove, eh, well, I think maybe if you didn't have a bent bumper like me, you'd probably be able to get to them. But you have also two 10 mils that are right there that you have to remove. And then you got to obviously take out the headlight if you have a, a fender like that so you don't break it. But as you can see, mine was already destroyed, luckily. That one's broken. The other one's good. And I believe it's actually brand new. Yeah. Brand new headlight for that. So next step is jack her up. Start taking apart all the linkages. And as you can see, this little droplet here is a uh, power steering fluid. Now, I don't know if you can see them, but these hoses that are right here. It looks like one of the clamps is just bad or the hose is disintegrated enough that it's starting to leak out of there. I did have to replace the uh, steering gearbox on this just because it actually snapped the end of the gearbox off. Like what connects to the drag link and everything. It completely snapped it off. It uh, was kind of surprising, but you could sit in the driver's seat and just spin the wheel and nothing would happen. So... Replace that. I might have destroyed the lines. I don't think I did. I think they might just be old enough that uh, they're disintegrated and started to leak out the clamp. I may just need to tighten the clamp up. I don't know. I'll have to check it out after I get everything else buttoned up. But going to get it jacked up, get the wheels off, start getting all the linkages undone, and see about getting this front end dropped out of here. So... Anyway, I told you at the beginning of the video, I would tell you how much I paid for this truck. And before I forget again, um, I paid $2,700 for this from a farmer. Uh, it was actually the farmer's son that had this truck. He's the one who rebuilt it. or well, not rebuilt it, but redid the whole front end, did the South Bend clutch, did the injectors, did the injection pump, cold air intake. And like I said, I've re seen receipts for all of this, so I know it's on the truck. He just had to keep it for farm write-off or whatever he said he had to keep it for. Um, I can get copies of it, but I'm not going to because I'm not going to get rid of the truck, so I don't care. But anyway, $2,700 for this truck. The guy was so pissed off when this happened that he honestly just wanted the truck gone. He didn't want to deal with it. He didn't want to do anything with it. And... I was lucky enough that the night, or well, it was like a week after it happened, the guy came in, I work at O'Reilly's part-time, he came into O'Reilly's, was asking to return a bunch of stuff that they bought for it, and I asked him what happened, he told me the whole story of how his son ran into a telephone pole, and it just, it crumpled the whole axle into the fender and everything, and I went out, looked at it, it fired right up, he showed me all the receipts, and I offered him, well, he told me he had an offer for 2,500. I was like, I'll give you 2,600 if you'll hold it until Friday, because this was a Wednesday. And he's like, you know what? You bring me $2,700. We'll call it good. Truck's yours. I will save it for you. So that Friday, walked out there with $2,700. My dad, trailer, dug it out, and it came and sat here for a year, and now we're finally redoing it. So that is the story of how we got this, and... Kind of running out of daylight today, but 
we're gonna try to get as much done as we possibly can. So, yep, gotta yep, <laughs> get back to work. As you can see, the inspector is inspecting. She, uh, she is liking what she is seeing. Alrighty, so as you can see, it's a different day. Uh, hat, jacket, all that. It's a little colder than what it was the other day. And uh, uh, let me fill you in on what we've got done. I was able to get my brother to come over and help me change, well, not change, but swap the axles because doing this with one person is kind of a pain in the ass. Especially if you don't have um, a lift or the proper jacks or whatever to do it. Plus, as you can see, not a lot of concrete here. I should have pulled this in towards the shop so that way I could have just used the front of the shop. But um, I recorded one part of it, but it wasn't as good as what I was thinking. So I'm going to show you how to... Pretty much take out a front axle out of one of these trucks if you don't know how to do it. It's pretty easy to do. Um, but yeah, let me show you how to do it. I'll show you everything that I've gotten done so far, what I had my brother help me with, all that. So here we go. All right, I just recorded like a whole bunch of stuff that I don't know where it ended. So let's start over. Got your steering dampener right there. It's another little shock. It bolts up right here, connects to the uh, one of the tie rod ends or drag links, whatever you want to call it. You disconnect that from the pitman arm, and then on both sides of your uh, steering knuckles, you have them connected here. And then you have your track bar, pan hard bar, whatever you want to call it. I'd recommend taking it apart from the frame and the axle. That way, if you just take it off the axle. You have to push the axle towards the passenger side and then down to get the track bar out. Um, you have your sway bar in links here. Make sure you disconnect both of those. And then you have your shock. Uh, you have a nice little opening right there. You got a three quarter head on that. That's just this truck. I don't know if other trucks are gonna be different. But after you take that out, and then you come back here. Both sides are gonna be the same. You have a normal nut and bolt on your upper control arm and then you have an alignment bolt down here so unless you want your axle doing this the whole time you're trying to take this out take the side with the nut off and hold the other side otherwise as you can see here it's flat there it will just spin these washers and you may mess up your alignment marks here uh, and that controls the pitch to help out with the drive shaft and speaking of the drive shaft you have four Torx head bolts. These were T40s, and I was only able to get this one out. All the other ones are stuck in there. I don't know if I stripped them out, but I know I did end up breaking a bunch of bits trying to get it out. I'm going to run to town and see if I can't find one of the four inch or six inch long torque heads. Um, See if I can't get them out that way because I do need to reuse that drive shaft. I got another one, but it ended up being way shorter. Um, as you can see, I took caliper off. That way I didn't have to break brake lines loose. Um, if you're doing it on your own truck, that's what I would recommend. Just take these off, hang them up. That way they're out of your way. Um, whatever. And then that's honestly pretty much all you got to do. Uh, you don't have to worry about any brake lines. I guess you do have your vent tube, which if you just wanted, you can cut it or it, mine was just clipped up to the top of the uh, shock tower. So I just unhooked it real quick, called it good. Um, I'm not really sure what else I'm forgetting. If I remember anything else later on, I will let you know. Uh, Another little tidbit, I am changing the hubs out, so what you have to do to do that, this is a, oh, what was it, 44 millimeter, I believe, or an 11 16 something like that, and you pretty much just take this cotter key out, cotter pin, whatever the hell you want to call it, take this nut off, 
Then you've got four 18 millimeter bolts to hold the back on, and then you beat this off, comes off, put your new one on, you have torque specs, they usually come with the new hubs, I think it's over in that one, oh, sorry, covered up the camera, come on, focus, there we go, so that is where I am at, um, kind of help with the drive shaft here, I tried taking it off from the transfer case up to the drive shaft or the front axle just to see if I can get a little bit more pitch to try and get those bolts out. It honestly did not help me. So as you can see, I ended up having to take the whole axle out with the drive shaft attached to it. I'm going to go to town and try to get one of those four or six inch long torque spades. See if I can't get the rest out. But you don't have to take the uh, brake caliper off with the rotor. If you're just stealing the axle out of another truck, you can just obviously cut brake lines. Um, like this one, I've got ABS on it. This one they cut, which is why I'm also changing out the hub. Because instead of having a normal Allen wrench, it's just a five point. Come on, focus. There we go. A little five point. I don't have any of those, plus I wanted to make sure that this is going to be a very reliable truck, so I am also going to be uh, uh, changing out gear fluid, probably going to take that cover off, double check everything. Um, this was out of a running and driving truck, so plus it feels really good. If I remember correct correctly, the truck had a tree or something fall on top of it that pretty much just ruined it, so the guy parted it out. I got front and rear axles from it. I also have the frame down in the machine shed. So this is pretty much what you gotta do. Um, I'm gonna keep going here, trying to get the rest of this done before it snows. Uh, we are supposed to have snow today, but as of right now, it's just cold and windy, so, yeah. Hey, everybody. Um, Axel is pretty much done in the truck. Um, Dad showed up. We were able to get the old drive shaft out right here. There we go. Right there. Uh, we used... Just a regular drill bit, drilled the heads out, used a chisel and knocked them off. Actually went by pretty quick, a lot easier than any of the other one. Any of the other ones have uh, gone for us, so um, I'll give you a little walk around. There we go. As you can see, drive shafts off, land there. Got to put it back in. Um, we're gonna go and see if we can't get some hex bolts to put into it, because those are gonna be a lot easier to get out in the future. And, uh, but, got the pitman arms hooked up, got new hubs put on, got the calipers put on, rotors, all that good stuff, ABS and everything routed. Um, everything up here is buttoned up besides sway bar in link, yep. sway bar in link. On both sides, obviously, uh, we're gonna get new ones. The old ones were a little, a little shoddy. I don't know where they are, but it doesn't matter. But next time you see the truck, we are going to have everything buttoned up. We're, we got a line on a new grill. Um, well, not new, but new to the truck. Um, we also got some wheels and tires that came off of one of my dad's old trucks that he got rid of. We want to see if they'll fit on here. They are quite a bit bigger than what's on here any or stock. These two. And, uh... Those are just 35s. The new ones you got? Yeah. Aren't these only 33s? Pretty much. They're 285s. Yeah, 285s. 70-17s. So, yeah. So, anyway, we'll try to fit them on here. 
we need to get everything here cleaned up as you can see we have a crap load of tools laying around but yeah this is kind of what happens whenever you do a last minute job everything gets scattered everywhere and you have fun time cleaning up yeah definitely should have done this during the summer so anywho that's it for now so bumper is on it surprisingly not off of that truck same with the uh, fender headlight found out for some reason a lot of you will notice this little area right here it is from that piece right there that you use to pop the hood for some reason no idea why these brackets had another bracket behind it and it was kicked out so instead of sitting flat like it's supposed to it was kicked forward or the bottom was kicked forward so there's that on top of that we uh we uh, got a little impatient we are going to put a two inch leveling kit on this truck if just because we already ordered it it was 30 bucks couldn't pass it up but as for the wheels and tire combination this is what we went with some xds um nice 35s we were talking about them in a uh, previous part of this video and recording videos with my dad is a little hard because he gets very impatient so he wants to start it up and see if the wheels are going to hit or not without the spacer so without further ado he's going to fire up Should be able to turn a lot more than that. Oh, she's going to rub. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but need to throw some uh, tranny fluid in the power steering. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Alrighty, so this is gonna be the outro on the video. Um, as you can see, it's not where it was. So better shot of it. Whole truck is probably gonna get repainted eventually. Or it might stay, I don't know. I'm thinking it, uh, it definitely needs repainted, but got everything buttoned up, checked everything out. Now we do have the fog lights right there. Uh, they are coming out of the other truck's bumper. Um, we aren't gonna put a bumper back on that truck. We're just going to make it a plow truck. It was originally going to be a parts truck for this one. But now it's going to be a parts truck slash plow truck because the one we were using as a plow truck decided to die. The uh, motor still runs, but tranny, sh it shit itself. It's gone. So, but for the most part, the white with the gold actually doesn't look horrible. But definitely need to get the rust fixed on the cab and everything, so... I'm hoping this video wasn't too jumpy. I was in a bit of a hurry trying to get everything done. Um, don't know what that was. But yeah, I was in a bit of a hurry trying to get everything done. Um, I was expecting for it to start snowing by now because we were told that we were going to get five to six inches last week, um, which was two days after I started this video. 
and we are here a week later and the most snow we got was about half an inch maybe if that and as you can see it's already gone and it's supposed to be 70 degrees on wednesday it's sunday now so there's that but now i don't have to worry so much the only thing that's left on this truck is uh we gotta get some extra lug nuts um we were missing eight of them for that wheel over there because it was a different tire or wheel and tire and we weren't given the lug nuts for it um riley's doesn't carry 9 16 uh spline drive lug nuts that will fit these wheels so yeah we got to find some of those and other than that pretty much just need an alignment on it and it should be good enough for my dad to drive during winter so there's that uh thank you for watching if you have any questions at all go ahead and leave a comment and uh if you would hit the subscribe button as you can see i work on a lot of dodges um a little sneak peek this one's going to be in the next video just picked that truck up yesterday and uh we're gonna see about getting it running and driving so yeah thank you have a great day